To God be the glory and praise, I would like to share to each and every one uh, the dream that I had April 17. In this dream, I've been seeing a lot of people rushing and running towards the bank. They are taking their money out of the bank, including the employees who work on the bank. They're taking their checks to make sure that they have their money out. And everybody was like rushing and rushing, you can see. And then on top of this building, on top of this building of the bank, there's actually a very huge widescreen TV that they are, you know, showing what's going on. They're showing why the people are in rush to take their money out. And so as they were rushing, I was even telling myself, I said, you know, I said, in the Philippines, you can have a brace for $200, but here in the States, it's a thousand and it's very expensive. And that's what I was, uh, I was trying to tell. And then uh, the dream ended. So what is this trying to tell us, brothers and sisters? Is this going to be the economic collapse of, um, of this place? Or, yeah that uh, ma people will be rushing to get their money out is that um yeah the economic collapse the money will be worthless what is the lord trying to tell us the the things that's going to happen in the last days the lord said the evil in the last days in second timothy 3 verse 1 but understand this in the last days terrible times will come for men will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boastful, arrogant, abusive, disobedient to their parents, ungrateful, unholy, and there's more, right? Very, very into their money. That's why the Lord said, you know, uh, you have to choose who you wanted to serve. Serve God or you want to serve money. But since money is the number one, you know priority of majority of people that they're serving their money more boasting about what they have boasting about their underground tunnels boasting about the money the airplane the yacht the helicopters whatever they have that they even bought their house to the moon to wherever thinking that they, this money and gold will serve them what will the lord do the Lord is trying to show them that they're not supposed to trust on their money, their silver and gold, but to trust in Him only. The Lord said in the last days, there will be mark of the beast. What do you think is the reason why they're going to do the mark of the beast? You know, this is the, the scheme of the devil to bring the people to hell. But at the same time, when there will be an economic collapse, Everybody saying there will be one world monetary system that you can't buy or sell because they will say, okay, money is useless. So therefore, we're going to have this one so everybody will be uniform. But they control all the food. They control everything. And if you're just poor and you don't have stock of food, what will you do? It will be hard, right? But then the Lord is going to protect his children. The Lord said in Revelation 13 verse 16, And the second beast required all people small and great, rich and poor, free and slave, to receive a mark on their right hand or on their forehead, so that no one could buy or sell unless he had the mark, the name of the beast or the number of its name. The Lord gave this instruction to all of us and gave these Bible verses for us to know and to be aware. Why? Because He don't want us to receive the mark of the beast. Once you receive it, you will have the source, you will have the boil, and you will end up in hell. And you can't buy. You can't buy or sell anymore because they will control everything. And this is the reason why when you go to the news or you go to YouTube, they're patronizing, showing that it's okay to receive it. And then they're showing it that it's easy, convenient for you to buy your food and just swipe your hand, to go to work, just swipe your hand. But this is the scheme of the devil trying to make it look good. 
it's actually mind control to make people know that it looks so good and it's easy for you but they don't know that this open door is leading to their distraction and to their death and we don't want to be a part of it remember brothers and sisters satan is a roaring lion looking for anyone to devour to kill to steal and to destroy and if you don't have the knowledge and understanding about the words of God, you will be deceived. And this is the reason why the Lord is pouring out His Spirit upon His children in these last days to have dreams, to have visions, and to prophesy. So they will be aware, they will be forewarned, and they will repent from their sins and go back to Him Go back, repent from, repent from your sins and go back to Him so you will be saved. That's the reason why the Lord is warning each and every one of us. Brothers and sisters, He said, you know, He, he already spoken that He's going to make all these things happen. Heaven and earth will pass away, but the word of the Lord will never pass away. It will come into pass. It will happen. But the Lord promised that we should have courage. He said, he's trying to tell us, brothers and sisters, don't be scared. Be courageous. He said in Deuteronomy 31 verse 6, he said, be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or terrified because of them. For the Lord your God goes with you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. Praise be to God. And that's the promise of the Lord. He will never leave us. He will never forsake us. He is true to His words. No lie comes out of His mouth. He is truthful and faithful to His words. Therefore, He's going to do that. He will never leave us. He will never forsake us. He also promised in Isaiah 41 verse 10, He said, So do not fear, for I am with you. Do not dismay, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand, saith the Lord. See, do not fear. Do not be scared. If you Christians are ready, even though we still have this flesh, we always have to remind ourselves not to fear. Because the Lord will not abandon us. He will not forsake us. Look at what happened to the, to the children of God when they were walking for 40 years and 40, 40 years in the desert. The Lord was keeping, keeping an eye on them. Covered clouds on them to give them protection. Give them the fountains of water so they can drink. Give them food, manna, and quail to eat. How much more we children of God in these last days? The Lord performed those miracles before and He's going to perform much, much more in our last days because this is the culminating day. If you're going to school, this is like the graduation day. We're going to graduate. We're going to get our diploma. We're going to get our certificate. And the Lord is going to make sure that He is there for us as long as we continually trust in Him. Trust in Him and have faith that He will never leave us, that He will never for forsake us. Praise be to God. Brothers and sisters, is this a sign of coming, coming famine also? Since calamities are everywhere, if there's going to be... Uh, you know, economic collapse, everything will be falling like domino effect. A lot of places right now, they have, it's either they have fire, volcanic eruption, they have storms, they have flooding, everything. If calamities are everywhere, and now what did the Lord said? Famine will be next. The third seal in Revelation 6. And when the Lamb opened the third seal, I heard the third living creature say, Come, 
Then I looked and saw a black horse, and its rider held in his hand a pair of scales. And I heard what sounded like a voice from among the four living creatures saying, A quart of wheat for a denarius, and three quarts of barley for a denarius, and do not waste the oil and the wine. Brothers and sisters, it's going to be hard everywhere. It's going to be hard everywhere. But for the children of God, just like what he promised in Psalm 91, a thousand may fall in your side, ten thousand at your right hand, but it shall not come near you. You will only observe with your eyes and see the punishment of the wicked. If you say the Lord is my refuge and you make the most high your dwelling, no harm will overtake you. No disaster will come near your tent, for he will command his angels concerning you to guard you in all your ways. They will lift you up with their hands so that you will not strike your foot against the stone. You will tread upon the lion and the cobra. You will trample the great lion and the serpent. Because he loves me, says the Lord, I will rescue him. I will protect him for he acknowledges my name. He will call on me and I will answer him. See, that's the promise of the Lord. That's the promise of the Lord. So, brothers and sisters, Jesus is calling all of us to repent from our sins. He even said in Acts 2, uh, Acts 8, verse 20, But Peter replied, May your silver perish with you, because you, you thought you could buy the gifts of God with money. Remember this guy who actually wanted to get the power that Peter and the apostles had, and he goes with them, he's a magician and everything? And then Peter said when he found out that uh, he wanted to get, the, the main reason why he wanted to go to the group is he wanted to, that, to get that power. And he's paying it with silver and gold. Look at this one, brothers and sisters. A lot of people are really very arrogant and very conceited that they thought they can buy everything with their silver and gold because they have everything in their hand. If they can buy girls... All the girls are clinging with them, not all the girls, but a lot of girls are clinging with them because they have uh, money, expensive cars, mansion houses, whatever. They're not thinking, all of this comes from the Lord, all the things that we have here on earth. The Lord can give, the Lord can take. And the Lord's going to prove to these arrogant people who think that they have everything and they don't need God, the Lord's going to show to them that He can take the money away and that money will be useless. All these evildoers who are so united to, to do these things, to, to hurt the children of God and do this uh, marking of the beast, they're thinking that they're saving their life because they can still buy and sell because they're part of the group. They're not thinking that their place in hell is waiting for them. Brothers and sisters, everything belongs to the Lord. If Jesus instructed the 12 apostles about not carrying silver or gold when they do the disciple, when they preach the words to the four corners of the world, he said in Matthew 10 verse 9, Do not carry any gold or silver or copper in your belts. You know, silver, gold, and copper actually represents money during those times. When they buy things, they, they exchange with silver and gold. But Jesus instructed them not to bring anything. So if you think about that, if they're not bringing anything, how will they be able to survive to eat? Where are they going to go to have their shelter? If God the Father provided food and shelter to the Israelites during the time of Moses, do you think God won't provide those shelters and food to the 12 apostles who are the best friends of Jesus Christ? And if God Almighty provided the food and the shelter and everything they need for the 12 apostles, how much more to us in these last generations? Jesus said in that last days, wait for the, the, the blessing of the Holy Spirit, the coming of the Holy Spirit. Because you will be performing more miracles than He do or He did. 
So it means the Lord is actually making sure that we will be born again and receive the, the gift of the Holy Spirit so we will be able to be the disciple of the Lord while waiting for His coming. So while we are doing the discipleship, while we are preaching the words of God, while we are bearing fruits for the kingdom of God in these last days, the Lord said He's going to provide for us. He said, I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. He will be with us until the end of time. So, you know, why will why will the Lord provide for us? Why did the Lord provide for them? Remember what the Lord said in Matthew 6, 33, which is also the same in Luke 12, verse 31. The Lord said, but seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and everything will be added unto you. Brothers and sisters, if you do the will of God, if you follow the Lord according to his will, if you walk in righteousness, believing that right now I don't have this, but I trust in you, Lord, I will do what you want me to do. The Lord said, if you seek him, seek him first in his kingdom, all the things that you need will be given unto you. So why do you have to worry? He can miraculously send people, even angels, to knock on your door to help you. Look at what happened during the time of the, the, the Israelites. Quail just appeared, manna just fall in the sky, water just appeared. And, even, and, and during those times, they're even mumbling all the time, complaining. During our time, brothers and sisters, even during the time of trouble, don't lose, don't lose hope. Have faith and believe because the Lord can multiply even the smallest food that you have in the kitchen. Why did I say that? Do you remember the story of Isaiah? When he started to shut off the heavens so there's no rain that's going to come? He went to the house of a poor widow who got one son and they only have a little flour and oil to cook that day as their last meal. But because this prophet, this child of God, approached them and told her that he needs to be fed first and they will be fed by the Lord. He trusted in God. Uh, she trusted in God and he be she believed in him. And what happened? His, her flower, I'm sorry, her flower just multiply and multiply and oil didn't stop. Imagine for three years. They ate and ate coming from the same container. If that happened in the past, this will happen to us because the spirit of Elijah and Moses will be going with us together with the saints and angels of the Lord and number one, the Holy Spirit and Jesus Christ in us in these last days. Brothers and sisters, the Lord said, Therefore, brothers and sisters, Jesus is calling you all, all of us, to repent from our sins and be ready. Be ready for His soon coming. In Revelation 22 verse 12, the Lord said, Look, I am coming soon. My reward is with me and I will give to each person according to what they have done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the end. Blessed are those who wash their robes, that they may have the right to the tree of life and may go through the gates into the city. Outside are the dogs, those who practice magic arts, the sexually immoral, the murderers, the idolaters, and everyone who loves and practices falsehood. I, Jesus, have sent my angel to give you this testimony for the churches. I am the root and the offspring of David and the bright morning star. The spirit and the bride say, Come, and let the one who hears say, Come. Let the one who is thirsty come, 
and let the one who wishes take the free gift of the water of life. This is the word of the Lord. Praise be to God. Brothers and sisters, the Lord is coming. He is really coming. He said when he allowed me to see him in the staircase of heaven, I saw him standing in a long staircase, very wide staircase. It's actually like brick white staircase like this in white and then he was standing at the middle and then all of a sudden i saw like a hand putting a putting a crown on his head and i heard the voice saying he is crowned king of kings and then after that he you know after that i saw him he actually opened the gates of heaven and he said i am now ready for my people brothers and sisters Jesus is coming, just like what the angels are singing when they were in front of me. Jesus is coming. Brothers and sisters, Jesus is coming. And just like what he said, I am now ready for my people. Jesus is ready for us. The question is, are we ready? Are we ready to face the King of Kings and Lord of Lords? Is our dress white, clean, and pure? Are we holy and righteous in the eyes of God? He gave us all the instructions in order for us to walk righteously with Him. And I pray to the Lord that the Lord will shed His precious blood upon us to cleanse us. That we will be worthy, clean and pure in His eyes. That we will be there in the wedding and be with Him for eternity forever and ever. Brothers and sisters, why am I seeing this 200, I said, you know, when you go, uh, when you, you can have a brace in the Philippines for 200, in here it's expensive. Sometimes people are just, you know, they, they put braces on their teeth. I used to have, but you know what? We're not supposed to focus on that anymore. Uh, or maybe, um, let, let me say it in another way. Why am I saying 200? $200. What is 200 in the Bible? Do you know that 200 means insufficiency in the Bible? During the time of Joshua, this man named Achan took 200 shekels silver and gold and he was stoned to death. Do you also know that the mother of Micah in the Bible, he actually melted 200 silver just to make an idol and this is or uh, this was the first idol worship in the house of Israel. And during the time of Paul when he was speaking about Jesus Christ after his persecuting the Christians, he was actually escorted by 200 soldiers. So people because people are rioting also to kill him, but he was escorted by 200 soldiers. And in the book of Ezra there's also 200 singing men and women. So brothers and sisters, what do you think is the 200 mean? 200 means it's not sufficient. It's not enough. So it's like saying we are heading in this time that the salary of people, people probably below average, are not going to be enough to feed their family because everything will be so expensive. And it will be hard. And... This, you look at this in two ways. Others will be in a hardship, but always remember, trust in the Lord, you children of God. Have faith, believe, because the Lord will never forsake us. He will never abandon us. Whatever chaos is going on, every part of the world, the Lord said, uh, there will be plague everywhere. You know, he said, whoever dwells in the shelter of the Most High will rest in the shadow of, all, of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. Surely He will save you from the fowler's snares and from the deadly pestilence. He will cover you with His feathers and under His wings you will find refuge. His faithfulness will be your shield and your rampart. You will not fear the terror of night, nor the arrow that flies by day, nor the pestilence that stalks in the darkness, nor the plague that destroys at midday. He said, a thousand may fall on your side, ten thousand at your right hand. It will not come near you. 
So that's the promise of the Lord. And we always have to believe and trust in Him. If one way or another, you will be affected with the flood. If in one way or another, that you will be affected with there's no electricity right now, volcanic eruption, a lot of people are getting out. Remember I said, the Lord showed me there will be three more and uh, a lot of things that the Lord showing me are already coming into pass. And I give Him the glory and praise because I'm not, I'm not making up those dreams. I believe and I truly believe it's coming from the Lord. And He's actually justifying it with His words. Brothers and sisters, He's raising up a lot of His children right now in these last days. To be strong, to be courageous, to encourage each other up. To encourage, to get those people who are still sleeping, to get those people who are staying in darkness, to find the light of the Lord. Because He is our only hope, our salvation, our only peace, our only love, and our only truth, and our only life. And He is also the only way. There's no other way, brothers and sisters, but only with Jesus Christ. And so, whatever happened, Remember the story of Job. He didn't give up. Don't give up, brothers and sisters, because the Lord has a plan for each and every one of us. He said, I have a great plan for you. And he said, come home with me. He also said that to me, come home with me. And I know it's not only for me, but for all his children. He's telling us, come home with him. And we will go home with Jesus Christ in heaven for eternity so brothers and sisters god bless each and every one pray for one another pray for our family pray for each and everyone's family that their eyes will be open to see their ears will be open to hear and that the lord will cleanse their heart to find him in jesus yeshua's name amen and amen god bless you